Hey, shout out to Funny Quotes on Twitter. They put a post on Twitter seven hours ago, and they said, Everyone's playing Pokemon again. Blink-182 has a number one song. A Clinton's running for president. And Tarzan's in theaters. Welcome to the 90s. That might be true, my friend. That might be true. My name is JT, and welcome to the Paradise Podcast. Thank you so much for pressing the play button on your iTouch. Thank you so much for pressing the play button on your Samsung Galaxy. Thank you for talking about me to your mom and your dad over a cup of coffee at Starbucks. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Um, also to all of you guys, about an hour ago I did an interview with a great author on my other podcast, The Good Read Podcast. Uh, her name is Brenda Drake. I know not all of you guys love to read like I do. Most of you guys weren't nerds like me and had real lives. But if you want to take the time to go check out the podcast, it's the Good Read Podcast. And every platform that you might be listening to me on, whether it be YouTube or iTunes, SoundCloud, etc., you can find the interview on. Um, today, I want to talk about a lot of different things. Um, this episode is going to be fairly short because I'm on a schedule right now, so I can't do as much as I want to. But... After some advice from a dear friend of mine, very talented uh, screenwriter, I decided to divide the show up into three segments. Um, the segment that we're going to have right now is the star chart where we discuss what's going on with celebrities and music and everything else that's really on your eye touch. Then after that, we're going to talk about what's going on in the world, which is going to be the Herald section, Heaven's Herald. Um, also, the last section is going to be the People's Platform. And the People's Platform, what's going to happen is... If you connect with me, tweet about this podcast, tweet me at JT's Boldest Dream, tweet me at Instagram, then simply, I'm tweeting my Instagram at JT's Boldest Dream, then I'll read some of your tweets, I'll answer some of your questions. In fact, a lot of the time, I'm going to start doing this podcast recording it live through my Spreaker app, so you can connect me through Spreaker, and maybe in the future also download a mobile app, and therefore we'll have a better connection, and on the People's Platform section, we'll just talk a little bit more. So, Star Chart, let's get it going. Star chart, I want to talk about what happened at the Hip Hop Honors, just to get that off of my chest. With the Heaven's Herald section, I'm going to talk about what's going on in Italy, the train crash that killed 20 people. Um, I also want to talk about the situation in Heaven's Herald that's going on in South Sudan. But for Star chart, I'm going to talk about the Hip Hop Honors, I'm going to talk about Wendy Williams. Um, Hip Hop Honors came on last night, performed, uh, viewed on VH1. I hope you took the time to see it. Um, they did an awesome job honoring Salt and Pepper. They did an awesome job bringing Lil Kim out there. They did a terrible job of having my man Rich Homie Quan come out there and be the the mess up guy. He came out there like many million vanilla, not knowing his lines and shit. Excuse my language. Um, and for those of you who didn't see it, basically what happened was at the hip hop honors they honored Biggie by having Lil Kim perform his song "Get Money." And they decided, for whatever reason, the God's Green Earth, they decided to have Rich Homie Kwan play in the place and do the duet with Lil' Kim. And Rich Homie Kwan came out there. He was dressed nice. I'm gonna give him his I'm gonna give him his credit. He was dressed nice. Rich Homie Kwan came out there dressed like really like how Notorious B.I.G. dressed with the with the crimsley, crimsley, crim uh Koozie sweater on. Had his little hat on everything. He looked he looked like a nigga from the nineties. I ain't gonna lie to you. He looked good. Um he came out there, he was performing. He forgot his lines two, three seconds in. Like literally past the first sentence in the performance, he forgot his lines. And I don't know, it is funny because when you watch the performance, when you really watch the performance, you don't really see anybody showing like a what the F face. You don't see anybody saying anything about it. Even Lil' Kim was playing it off. Really, most of the backlash that he got was the people who were watching it and it had Twitter open up on their phones. That's where most of the backlash that it came from that were came from him at. And a lot of the celebrities got on his head about it. Charlemagne the God on Twitter tweeted, Man, Rich Homie Kwan gotta take the L for this. Ebro, who uh, famous radio personality, DJ, DJ Ebro even tweeted, man, you had one job. How'd you F that up? You had one job. And a lot of people were saying, you know, why would you even have this down south rapper to represent a New York hip hop artist? 
My personal opinion about it is, did he rich homie Quan drop the ball? Of course, he dropped the ball. He dropped the ball, dropped the, the, dropped the sink, and sunk, he sunk the ship, he killed the fish. He effed up in so many ways with this. I feel the problem with, I feel the problem isn't so much with Rich Homie Kwan so much as the program director. Why would you even pick Rich Homie Kwan to be the entertainer in a Biggie show? His flow doesn't sound like Biggie. He doesn't rap like Biggie. He isn't from New York. Biggie's son is still alive and breathing, so why wouldn't you do like in the first hip hop honor show that came on in 2006 and just get his son who went in the 2006 one? What they did was they honored Easy E and got his son Lil Easy. Why didn't you just get Biggie's son or get any other random fat, dark skinned black guy to play him? Anybody else past six foot two and darker than Whistly Snipes would have been would have been better than um, Rich Homie Kwan. Anybody else? Why would you get him to represent? That doesn't make sense to me. And the Rich Homie Kwan on Rich Homie Kwan's part, how could you F that up? How could you F that up? Because I know about these shows. I used to be a security guard at a lot of concert performers. And a lot of the times they would have us do the security a few days before the actual performance. And when you would come there, they would have dozens Dozens of uh, dozens of sound checks a day to perfect the performance, to perfect them before they got on stage and started rapping on whatever, whichever it is they were performing. I know Rich Homie Kwan off the next stage a couple of times and practiced. How could you forget at that moment? And you only had like four or three sentences to say. Rich Homie Kwan, you do performances across this whole country. How could you mess that up? Joey Badass in that article by XXL Magazine, Joey Badass even tw- uh, even said, man, this is everything that's wrong. That performance is everything that's wrong with hip-hop right now. And I, I'm Joey Badass actually gets busy. I was about to say I don't really listen to him, but I will note, Joey Badass is an excellent rapper. But at the same time, you can't deny him because he's speaking the truth. He's speaking the truth. Like, what would you think? Um, I wanted you to tell me what you think about it. I want you to tell me what do you feel? Because at the end of the day, this podcast is a platform for you, just like it's a platform for me. And I want you to tell me what do you think about it? Um, you can leave me your opinions, like I said, on my Twitter and on my Instagram. And we can have the discussion there and talk more about it. Also, I wanted to talk about, um, in the Heaven's Herald section, I want to talk about the train crash that happened in Italy. In the Heaven's Hero section, like I said, we're going to just discuss anything that happens to do with news, anything that happens to do with politics, anything that happens to, happens to do with what's going on in the world, in the real world. I'm going to, I want to talk about what's happening in Italy with the train crash, and I also want to talk about Bernie, Bernie Sanders endorsing Hillary Clinton. First, with the train crash, 20 people were killed in a train crash in southern Italy. When you see the picture of this train crash, just Google it on your phone. Just go ahead, Google train crash Italy. When you see the picture of how these two trains collided into each other, it is shocking. It makes your heart stop. It's so crazy how that happened. That's, it's amazing. That's crazy. So I want to actually give my condolences to them, um, to, to the people in Italy, to the families of those 20 people who are lost. I want to give my condolences to them. I feel sorry that that happened. That's a terrible tragedy. And, you know, I hope that the Italian government is doing everything to help them. Um, also, I want to get into Bernie Sanders, my man Bernie Sanders. Earlier today, earlier Tuesday morning, Bernie Sanders came to a rally in New Hampshire and announced that he is endorsing, in fact, endorsing Hillary Clinton for the Democratic nomination for president. I mean, for that, uh, you know what I mean. Anyway, she she reason he's nominating her. He is nominating her for be president. He's nominating her to be president. He's endorsing her to be president. Apologize, Mark. I'm just kind of tired. I did two other podcasts. And I'm going to quote him on what he said at the rally was, Secretary Clinton has won the Democratic nominating process. I congratulate her for that. She will be the Democratic nominee for president, and I intend to do everything I can to make certain she will be the next president of the United States. I have come here today not to talk about the past, but to focus on the future. That future will be shaped more by what happens on November 8th in voting booths across our nation than by any other event in the world. I have come here to make it as clear as possible to why I am endorsing Hillary Clinton and why she must become our next president. Big salute to my man, Bernie Sanders. Big salute to my man, Hermione Sanders. Big salute to my man, Bernie Sanders. 
I appreciate what he's doing. You know, I respect him. It takes a, I respect him more because, you know, Bernie Sanders for the first half of the election, even up into the middle ground in the end, up until now, Bernie Sanders has always kind of went, went head on with Hillary Clinton. And you see that conflict between both of them. And I thought it was almost impossible to see them come together on, on, a, on, on any type of issue. But I respect him for taking the time to say, you know what, this isn't about my pride as a man, it's about the betterment of our nation. And so I'm going to take the time to say, you know what, I support what she's doing. Because we can't let Donald Trump get in and do to our country what, what, I really don't even have a good metaphor for it. But we just can't let him get in the office. And I respect him for that. I respect him for stating his opinions. I respect I respect Bernie Sanders because he's a true human who really cares about human beings at a whole at the heart. Hillary Clinton is like that too. She does have some other ulterior motives that you really just have to expect for somebody being a politician, you know. But at the same time, I respect her and like her. Donald Trump is just pure ignorance, the embodiment of ignorance, and I don't even see how he got this far in the election. But you know, it is what it is, and. Uh, it's, it's, it's it's amazing how far, you know, every time I see Donald Trump give a speech, I always think about that thing that Adolf Hitler said. He said, thank God that the masses don't think. And I feel like that's the same way with Donald Trump. Like, I feel like he's made it so far simply because the masses don't think. And the crowd that he's appealing to isn't even the crowd that he even cares about. I always say, like... They've been. I've been saying this for a long time. Them poor, those poor white people, that poor low class. He doesn't care about you guys, and I love you guys. You know, at the end of the day, I do this podcast for everybody. He doesn't care about you guys. That's, you're not an audience that he really cares about. This is a businessman. He only cares about business. But you know what? I, you know, I've done like 15 episodes talking about this dude. Let me just leave that alone. But at the end of the day, yeah. Salute to Bernie Sanders. I praise him. Italy. My condolences to Italy. I hope the government is taking care of the people lost in those casualties. Um, with that being said, this is the end of the podcast. This is going to be a short episode simply because I'm testing it out to try to find a rhythm for how I want it. Um, the people's platform right now, we don't have it right now because not enough of you guys have been tweeting and I've been waiting for you guys to kind of give me your feedback about the podcast and give me your feedback about things that are happening and tell me what do you think. If you want to message me, like I said, contact me on Instagram, contact me on Twitter, and also you can contact me on my Facebook at dream for you publishings. I love you guys so much. It's been the most utmost pleasure talking to all of you guys. Salute. Do your thing. Have a good day.